Welcome to Hood Champion Boxing and Sports. In boxing, you find a way to win or you find a way to lose. UFC me now? That's what Francis Ngannou was saying as he's smiling, showing all 32 teeth, and laughing his, laughing his way all the way to the bank. And let me tell you something. He deserves that money. He really does. Because, in my opinion, that's just all the money Dana White should have paid him for the time that he was in the UFC. Now, I have heard some people say, hey, Francis Ngannou, he's a hype job. Why are they paying him all this money? First of all, it's hard to call a man a hype job when he was coming out of probably the most violent, most brutal form of combat sports today. You can get kicked, kneed, elbow, head butted, choked out, limbs broken. I mean, what, what other sport is doing some shit like that? And he was able to reign supreme as the, uh, at the top of the heavyweight division over there at the UFC. But anyway, him coming to boxing, you know, look, if they want to put on these what I'm going to call freak shows, then there's nothing wrong with that. But they know people are going to tune in. And for those of you who are saying he's a hype job, why would somebody want to watch him? That shit with Tyson Fury was fixed. It, it, was, it was all staged to set up where we are now between him and AJ. And this is going to be fixed to where it looks competitive, to where he can go on and fight Deontay Walter. But that's a whole lot of goddamn planning behind the scenes. You know what I'm saying? But I don't think that's the case. Uh, but we can speculate because that makes for a healthy dialogue. But one thing we know for a fact is, right, according to the UFC CEO Dana White, he went on record talking about Francis Ngannou. And what he had to say was, when it comes to him and that punch that he has, right, he described his power as, because, you know, in case you guys didn't know, the reason why we're talking about Francis Ngannou's punch and how both hands he can crack. And that's why Tyson Fury went down, right? But Francis Ngannou holds the world record for the most powerful punch in the world. His punch is the equivalent to 96 horsepower, which is equal to getting hit by a Ford Escort going as fast as it can. And it's more powerful than a 12-pound sledgehammer swung full force from overhead. That's what they say. <laughs> Is that true? I don't know. But goddamn, when you take that into consideration with him going into this fight with AJ this weekend, boy, oh boy, if Francis and Gunnar lands clean, even though I got AJ winning the fight, if Francis Ngannou lands clean, oh my gosh, man, he may take Anthony Joshua's head off. Because I know he had the world record for the hardest punch, but, you know, the comparison here, and I guess the uh, experts over there at um, the Guinness Book of World's Record, and they measured the, <coughs> excuse me, and they measured punching power, and uh, it was the equivalent to what I just mentioned, you know, getting hit by a Ford Escort going as fast as as it can, and it's more powerful than a 12-pound sledgehammer swung full force from overhead, okay? But when you think about that, it's kind of like, to me, you know, I always like the guy who has the equalizer. Hard for me to count out a guy who has a puncher's chance, and Francis Ngannou has a puncher's chance with either hand. Anthony Joshua's chin, people say he has a weak chin. I think it starts up here. Anthony Joshua seemed to have regained some ground as far as what's going on with him mentally. Now, does he beat Francis Ngannou? I think so. But if he goes and tries to stand toe-to-toe -to -toe and look for the mashup, crash-up, he's going to have a problem because Anthony Joshua clipped Andy Ruiz. Andy Ruiz, fucking chuleta, pork chop, baby back, baby back, baby back ribs, his ass went down. Then he got up, right? And this is where the problems happen. He went, he threw that right hand again, boom, had success. But he went for that upper, that, that hook, and Andy Ruiz was able to catch him. He was able to catch him. And it, it just wasn't good for him. It was not good for him. Uh, and I think with Ngannou, if, if Anthony Joshua gets him hurt, and Ngannou starts to dance salsa in the ring, and AJ starts to go for the finish, there's always the chance that 
Francis Ngannou can land a shot very similar to what Andy Ruiz landed on Anthony Joshua. Joshua. But in this case, I don't think Francis Ngannou makes Anthony Joshua dance salsa in the ring if he catches him cleanly. I think he knocks him out cold. But that's a whole lot of, you know, what ifs, a whole lot of, you know, um, just, you know, things, stars have to line up for, for, for Francis Ngannou to be able to make that happen. Now, that being said, we're going to have to wait and see how it plays out. But the bottom line, win or lose come Saturday night, Francis Ngannou's already won, man. And two fights, this man's made uh, like $30 million plus dollars. And then he's about to fight in the PFL in a couple months. And then when he comes back, it looks like he's gonna be, he could be fighting uh, Deontay Walter. Right? Because, you know, if you listen, when he says, hey, I want to fight this guy, I want to fight that guy, that's who he's fighting. Okay? So it's real simple to me uh, who he's fighting next. So, uh, the Secret Society pulled up in the yard. But that being said, we'll see how it goes, man. I like Francis Ngannou. I like AJ. But I really like the fact that Francis Ngannou can say, you know what? UFC me now. All this money I'm making. Make you wonder, how the hell did Dana White drop, Dana White drop that ball? He's got to be feeling foolish. Anyway, y'all keep cool. I'm in the breeze.